Hello and welcome to another Cactus Hill Adventure. In today's episode, we're going to be going to Comb Ridge. It's there circled in the center of the map. It basically about 80 miles. It runs from uh, the Bayo Mountains in the north to almost Cayenta in the south. As you can see from the map, we're in the southeastern portion of Utah. There's a lot of other things to see and do while you're in this area. You can go to Hovenweep, the Edge of the Cedars, uh, Goosenecks at San Juan River, Muley Point, Moki Dugway, etc., etc. A lot of stuff to see and do in this area. Here's the area we're going to be in today, basically the Comb Ridge Wash area off of Highway 163. We're south of the highway and west of Bluff. Here's a little closer shot of uh, Highway 163 and the exit you'll take going to uh, Comb Wash Trail here. There's also a little sign that you'll see there and you're looking at the sign, you look back up the road, that's where you're going to be coming through the gap in the Comb Ridge there. Also there's a Comb Ridge Road. It looks more commercial, doesn't look like it's a trail or anything, but uh, we didn't go there, but I just thought I'd point out there's a difference between Comb Ridge Trail and Comb Wash. This is my destination, River House Cliff Dwellings, for that day. But here's where I ended up stopping and returning. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get into the video. Also, down where the arrow just pointed, there was a nice little area down by the San Juan River. Looked like a good place to camp or just visit and hang out. All right, here we go into the start of the comb wash. Uh, we're going to turn right here. If you go straight, it looks like it's an older trail that might have been there. Uh, prior to them building the road through the, the gap there. Down the right you'll see the obligatory sign of staying on the improved trails. And I'm going to speed up this video through various parts of it to kind of get through it. It took me about 40 minutes to get back to where the video will end so I tried to get it down to a, a reasonable amount. Here's the first uh, river crossing. I should say creek crossing. There's not really officially a river, it's a wash. There's going to be a total of 11 uh, wash crossings or water crossings and one dry wash crossing through this whole video. This was a lot of fun to drive. I really enjoyed this. It's a pretty good trail. There's some soft and sandy spots, but generally it's a good road. There's a couple of obstacles, and you'll see one towards the end that I wasn't aware of existed, but uh, again, I'll talk about that as we get to it. Now, we did this uh, trip in the spring of 2023, so I don't know if you came in the summer, would there be as much water? because uh, this is a wash it's not always full of water as I understand but uh, again we only traveled here during the spring and the last time we went was also in the spring a couple years ago so uh, if anybody else has any ideas later in the spring or summer or fall what this looks like uh, please put them in the comments We're going to be coming up to uh, Navajo Spring. There's a lot of uh, history in this area with the Mormon pioneers and what they called the hole in the rock. Um, there's a lot of information on the internet and I'll provide a link to the story behind that uh, if you're interested. Uh, but you'll see the wagon sign on some of the little markers here that show exactly where they had uh, traveled in the wagon trains. There's a side-by-side. -side. There was a couple that I, I stopped and chatted with uh, before I started the trail that gave me the lowdown. There's going to be a lot of water in the area and everything, so that was great to have their assistance and advice, so appreciate it. Thank you. 
I want to stress at this point that this is definitely a four-wheel drive trail. Uh, some of the parts don't look too intense, but there's a lot of sand here, and a lot of soft spots, and there's some bypasses and things, and uh, there goes the uh, other side-by-side -side that we chatted with a little bit. But definitely for four-wheel drive only, I would recommend. Uh, there's a couple places I needed to use the lockers. Uh, we'll be coming up here soon. And if you've watched any of my uh, other videos, I like showing the entire trail uh, so you can get an idea of what you're getting into. And again, I four-wheel drive, cable vehicle with a little clearance. That's the, what I would recommend. Here we're coming up on this uh, sand dune. I had gotten out and taken a walk up there, take a look at it. Didn't look too bad, but this sand was pretty deep, and you can hear the the Jeep struggling a little bit to get over it and I was just in four-wheel drive I wasn't in lockers right now and the key to that is just to keep your momentum going and don't try to spin the wheels too much to get deeper into the sand so I managed to get through there and I kind of stopped and I put the lockers on just in case and here we're going to speed it up a little bit to get through this section My theory about lockers is it's better to have them on and not need them than to need them and not have them on. So if anybody wants to comment on their use of lockers and when they think is appropriate, I'm willing to hear any and all arguments for and against that philosophy. Anyway, this is the area that I saw a trail review on trailsoffroad.com that showed this is the obstacle, the only obstacle on the trail. And I was kind of curious because this didn't really look like too bad an obstacle. Uh, our Jeep handled it fine. I think any actually stock Jeep would be able to handle this uh, well. Any, any vehicle that had a little bit of high clearance would do fine. Some of the SUVs, maybe not so much. But again, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, you know the capabilities of your own vehicle. This climb was actually pretty steep. I know that in videos it doesn't really show that well the steepness of the, the climb, but it was fairly steep. Road was good, little sandy in spots. You can hear the Jeep uh, spinning the tires a little bit here and there, but uh, made it through there fine. The bright green section there you see in the distance is the San Juan River. Uh, we'll get fairly close to it uh, when we uh, come to the point where I basically turn around and head back the same way I came in. And if you're curious, there is this first camping in this area. It is a BLM area, but it's also in Bears Ears National Monument. This whole drive is in Bears Ears National Monument. But currently it's managed by the BLM and they allow dispersed camping. So check before you go to make sure that's still the status quo.
there was a little bit of a drop here it doesn't show that well on the video but it was a significant drop in the road there this is the one dry wash that we passed through and all through this video you'll see some bypasses to take alternate trails my philosophy was to stay on the road that looked like the most used Again, another significant drop in the road. One thing I'd like to mention right now is I keep using the term we, it was just me on this trip today. My wife wasn't feeling well, so she decided to stay back at the verbal place we had rented in Blanding. If you are planning on coming to this area, this area is considered uh, on Cedar Mesa and also obviously the Comb Ridge area. There are some permits you can get an annual uh, pass for day hiking and I'll put a link in the, uh, the comment section where I explain what this video is about so you can go there and take a look at it. It costs about 40 bucks for a whole year uh, so ours is good until May of 2024. This uh, water crossing looked a little more uh, intense, so I got out and took a look at it and determined it to be fine and took my time coming down here and then kind of accelerated through and got through fine. There's a section coming up that uh, I'll slow down and I took a look at it. Uh, you have to remember that my viewpoint is higher than the camera. And what I saw was that the trail kind of narrowed along the side there where it went through some water and that it looked a little bit sketchy. Maybe it was okay for a side by side, but in a 5,000 pound Jeep it looked a little like I said a little sketchy so I took the bypass it's coming up here in a, a few minutes and again there's a lot of bypasses in this area so you can you know take them or not just depends use your own best judgment Here's that section I talked about a little earlier where I slowed down and take a look and I can see up ahead that there's a kind of narrows by that tree there in the center, a big tree and it got pretty narrow through there and it was about a two or three foot drop off into the water so I went ahead and took the bypass. Now this bypass was pretty deep in sand you can hear the Jeep struggling a little bit. I did have my lockers on right now but it a uh, couple spots it really uh, started to you know 
kind of sink in a little bit. And here we're returning to the, the main trail. If I'd gone straight ahead, this is the trail I would have been coming through on. These little pauses that you see in the change, I stopped several times and those are just uh, to make the video run a little smoother. I didn't, you're not missing any of the trail. This is pretty much 99% of the trail that I went on. As I mentioned earlier, I really enjoyed this ride through Combe Wash. It was just challenging enough to put the Jeep to a test, but it was fun and I wasn't really concerned that we'd get stuck or have any issues. This is another place where I stopped and took a walk down the, the wash a little ways to see what was ahead of us just to make sure that we could get it covered no problem. And again, this doesn't look as steep as it actually was. So I got out again and I walked up to the top to make sure what was on the other side it was fine. Levels out when you get to the top. So. Just about center of the screen, you'll see a geological feature kind of sticking up there. That's called Mule's Ear. It's on the other side of the San Juan River. Here we're coming up to the point where I basically stopped, evaluated the trail ahead, and decided not to continue on and return back the same way I came. I'll show you a couple of pictures here coming up uh, and where we're at and what's going on. The circle part is where I stopped, right there. I'm going to be showing you a couple pictures coming up that uh, there's the going up to the trail to the river house ruins. And there's the obstacle I was unaware of. It's pretty intimidating when you're looking at it in person. But now looking at the picture I can see a, a trail through there or a line through there. Again, here's the upper part of it. And since I was by myself, I didn't have a spotter, I decided to just turn around and return back to where I came. Here's a couple of pictures of the River House ruins that I got off the internet. And it looks like a place I want to come back to and explore. In my comment section for this video, I put a couple links to a video on YouTube showing this area. And I also put a 
a video for the Hole in the Rock uh, history. There's also links uh, to a BLM website that talks about this area, gives you information. There's also a link to uh, the Cedar Mace area to get permits for day hiking that I mentioned earlier in the video. And as I always mention, you won't know if you don't go. Thanks for watching. It's much appreciated.